Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Uh, happy Friday. And this is Pastor Chad with your word for the day. And, uh, and it's a little bit of a, uh, I want to say a downer, but it is. Uh, did you realize there's a difference between remorse and repentance? Uh, unfortunately, we see that tragically in the life and death of Judas. Judas Iscariot, the betrayer. Matthew 27, it, it records this story in the first 10 verses. It says, When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate, the governor. And when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. Now, we see the remorse on Judas' part. He suddenly regretted his decision and was trying to take it back. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. In other words, we don't care about you. We got what we wanted. That's on your hands. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, it is not lawful for us to put them into the treasury since it is blood money. <laughs> they paid out the blood money. That They're not going to put it back in. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. And that was fulfilling a prophecy of Jeremiah. So uh, what do we get from this? What, do we, what, you know, what lessons are there that we can take away? First of all, Judas regrets his betrayal. I mean, he tries to return the money because he feels guilty. He doesn't like what he's done. Then, uh, in despair, because he can't undo his actions, uh, you know, and, and it, it looks like he didn't really didn't want Jesus to be killed. Uh, we don't know what he wanted, uh, but he didn't look like he wanted him to be killed. He feels guilty, and now he's despairing. So he does another foolish thing, and that is commit suicide. Um, and so we see Judas regret, his remorse. He didn't repent. Now, he did confess, hey, this is blood money and I betrayed innocent blood. He did confess, but there was no evidence that he repented. And the, and the words in the original language don't say that. So uh, tradition is Judas is the worst of all sinners because he betrayed Jesus. Scripture says that Paul, the Apostle Paul, identifies himself as the chief of all sinners. Because Paul, as a Pharisee, was persecuting and killing and imprisoning and wrecking the lives of Christians simply because he saw them as a cult. Uh, now, in the midst of this tragic tale, here's really what I grieve. Judas gave up. He gave up. He realized that he had made a mistake, and he grieved that mistake, and he tried to confess that mistake. He tried to undo that mistake, and he couldn't undo it. So he gave up, he took his own life and he deprived himself of redemption. Now, I, what I wonder about, and we don't know because scripture doesn't tell us and it doesn't answer the question, but if Judas had waited until Sunday, could the story have been dramatically different? Because Jesus reinstated Peter after his denial, could there have been a, a moment of grace for Judas? I'm not saying he'd still been one of the apostles, but could he? have received the forgiveness of Jesus that is there for everyone if he just hadn't given in to the despair of the moment? Um, now, we don't know. We can't answer that, uh, but it would be consistent with Jesus and how he offered grace to people. So I just want you to know if you failed Jesus, if you're feeling guilty, if you're remorseful, uh, just do this. Confess and repent which means turning away from the activities or the actions or the behaviors that you've been engaged in. So confess your sin, repent of your sin, change your life, and then wait for God's redemption. It may not come instantaneously. It, it, God may have to do some things in your life to bring about that story of redemption. Uh, you know, Peter waited weeks. It wasn't instant after the resurrection, it was later. And, and, and wait for God to redeem your life. But please don't give up. Whether it's your marriage or whether it's your family or whether it's your job or your kids or sobriety or just life. Don't give up because the story isn't over and God can surprise you with his redemption if you just don't quit. So I hope that encourages you 
to uh, not lose heart in doing good. For in due time, you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. God bless.